Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about, give you an update on my local game store. It looks like today is Saturday. The first day of operation would be Sunday. It's kind of open to the public, but you wouldn't know it's open or it's location unless you had an invitation, which is mainly for friends and family. I do have to wake up super early and work and stock, and that should be kind of fun. So what are we stocking exactly? Artwork. Um, I have a very interesting collection of artwork. Not necessarily all magic, but you know we do, BigGale.com does photography, and we have our own artwork, our own designs, and we are a graphic design agency essentially. So yeah, we have plenty of that. I am a little scared. We, I did take out a second mortgage on my home. It is around $55,000. And for the first two months, my all, so before we begin, all my employees, their salaries are in escrow, so they're fine. I'm not gonna probably take a salary in the first two months, possibly the first four months of this venture. I have a little bit of money saved up that I can survive off, but taking about $55,000 in loans and not being paid for at least 90 days, if not, 120 days just to make it work is a bit scary. Now, is it a magic store? Yes, but I didn't want to commit to being a WPN. Uh, the reasons are very simple. Being a WPN gives Wizards of the Coast control over your store without any real tangible benefit. So in the past, the tangible benefits would be stuff like Commander Anthology or any of the anthologies would have been considered a benefit. Any of the master series would have been considered a benefit or having boxes at cheap price. If you got a box at $78, you could sell it for 120. That's very good margin. But if you get a box at $78 and online, it's already on Amazon for $70 or Dave and Adams, that, there's no reason to be a WPN store in my opinion. Yes, unfortunately, we don't get the foil tokens for Friday Night Magic but we also don't need to provide a space for people to play. So space is extremely expensive. Our number one cost, and one of the reasons that I had to take out a loan, was we signed up for a one-year lease. I tried to do six months, but the deal was really, really good uh, if I signed up for a year. It was much, much cheaper to do the year per month. But obviously, you're, you're kind of stuck there and there's no build out anymore. So every six months, if I did a six month contract, it would have been another build out uh, stipend. Now there's only one stipend. So yeah, it's a little scary. Why am I doing this? I always like adventures. I like to go on adventures with new people. I was part of a team and we sold a piece of software and it was very good. And the team, I never would have expected this random bunch of dudes and dudettes I, what are and okay males and females to to make it but we did i mean we had people straight out of school we had a, a kid, kindergarten teacher who was sick of being a kindergarten teacher we had a graphic designer with just tons of student debt i at that time was a patent attorney slash ip attorney slash corporate right did some corporation law. We had someone from India under H1B. We had a person with a son who was six and we had a person with a daughter who was two at the time. And we had an intern. We had multiple interns actually, now that I think about it. And we had a probably the meanest person I've ever met, but she actually was very important to the overall success of it. We also had a model, a model for hemp, a hemp clothing line. We bought a domain. I'm not gonna mention what the domain is, like a URL domain for over $12,000 from some person from South Korea who was sitting on it. And we got it and that was interesting and also scary because I didn't think that person was real or their English was incredibly bad. But again, they're from South Korea. So they probably only spoke Korean. And we purchased that website and that was a really beautiful website to have too. We created so many different websites and I would have never imagined that would be the team that could make a, such a beautiful product, but it was. 
it was just like a hodgepodge of people and attitudes and individuals and that's what I'm trying to do here. I know that you may not love Presley right now, but she is the future of this channel. I'm not going to leave and in fact I'm more interested in MTG Finance than ever now because I have to understand the economics. The economics are quite scary. I've been approached by seven people now, seven people at this point, and I have actually bought half an inventory, which I'll show you later when you know we organize. So Sunday is kind of like a soft launch. It has, it's pretty messy, and we got delayed because Presley was sick for two and a half weeks. When we have other stuff to do, and Presley was supposed to like do that part of it, I guess. And you know we had we have another business. If you ask like how can we afford it, it's because we have another very profitable business, which I'm also considering buying out at this moment. After you join your first startup and you see how much uh, money you're offered and you know the players and you know the venture capital companies, getting money is like easy. It's paying off investors that's really difficult. And there is a cost to everything. You accept their money now, it's always better to take a bank loan early on, in my opinion, than invest the money. We were offered large sums of investment money from current clients of mine and my other side of business, and I turned them all down, and I took the risk of having a bank loan and a second mortgage because I believe in it. Even if I fail, I'll be okay because the second company is profitable. So I have a safety mechanic. Now, why should... Why did I open a magic store when if you listen to Rudy, it sounds like the dumbest thing you could ever do, right? I don't expect my magic store to make money. Point blank. It would be the dumbest thing to do if I expected it to make money. But I do not expect my magic store to make money. I'm not going to use it as a tax safety haven or anything like that. I'm doing it for the branding. I'm doing it for the branding. So... In certain industries, let's say law, the most expensive keyword is called mesothelioma. If you type that in right now and you click on someone's ad, you just cost that person $400. I'm not kidding you. It costs $400 a click on an ad for the keyword mesothelioma. But for the SEO, the organic part, you have high competition. Well, what I found was I found, a, I found something in the Houston market where no one... Out of these seven people I talked to that wanted to sell me their store inventory slash stores, two of them had websites and they're not very good. So I can use my background and our training. I can use it as a training facility. So Presley does not really have the skills necessary right now and she'll be the first one to tell you, but I want to train her in the MTG Lion and then once she's ready, she can go to my real company. I've always had that issue where it's really hard for me to train people in a serious live environment, like our live business. I can give them like a fake business, like class almost. But in my opinion, I have a lot of education and there was none of it was very useful to me personally right now. You have to put someone in a live, live situation. Hey, Presley, go to this anime uh, convention. Try to sell some paintings or an art stuff. Go. And she's either going to do it or not do it. But I need to send her on the real life example. And then she would do it. And assuming that she does okay, she has now learned the sales skill far better than having her watch a YouTube video or me training her. I don't have the time to train her for seven, eight hours a day. So I'm sending her off to do sales or sending her off to do graphic design. I'm sending her off to do marketing, SEO, PPC, social media. She's doing the social media now and she's getting hit on by a lot of guys like just random weirdos and in social media on instagram so that's the key you ask why should i do it it's like so imagine i'm a football team not no football not football team yeah imagine i'm a basketball team this it would be my minor leagues the mtg line would be the minor leagues where i train all the people and then I give them 90 to 180 days, depending on if they want to be developer. They have full access to the Magento site. Uh, I think we're Magento, but we're also Shopify. Like, we're hybrid. It's not active now because, again, Presley was sick for two and a half weeks. 
but they can do the back end. They can, they can run a business. My point is, can I set these people together? And I know this works because I already tried it in my previous company. Can I put this team together and here's the team of trained people who are making money and doing a good job on real clients. And here's a team of very inexperienced people who needs, you know, real life examples and real life situations. That's what MTZ line is. It's supposed to lose money, but it's going to get me very well qualified individuals who are trained exactly how I want them to do, who are good at sales, who are good at graphic design, who are good at social media, who are good at all these things because to run it, it's just Presley right now. It's Presley with my help in tutelage and then Sophie as well. So it's Presley, Sophie, and me and Jessica. So it's four of us, but Jessica's not going to put much time on it. I'm not going to put that much time on it. Jessica would help with some of the content. I'll help with some of the PBC and the SEO. Sophie and Presley will have to you know, make the videos, make the content, make the website, promote it, even do the dreaded Patreon eventually. Uh, and it's going to be great. I think it's going to be fantastic because at the end of the day, I don't care about making money from MTG line. I just want my employees to get training, real life training. Sounds crazy, but that's exactly how my old company did it. And we were quite successful. Anyway, bye.